everybody, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming back. Welcome back. And if it's your first time, thank you very much for coming and watching. It means a lot to me. Uh, make sure you subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube. If you're on the blog, make sure you go to my bio page, check out all my social networks, and then subscribe to the blog too, right? There's benefits to doing both. Um, you get an email list, you get updated on new projects I'm working on, giveaways, I'll answer your questions. And also, follow me on all social networks. Uh, username is Dan Sfera, or you can always email me, dan at theclinicaltrailsguru.com, or call or text 949-415-6256. And um, that's the way the show works. You send me a question, and I will do a video response, or I'll just get back to you uh, like a normal person. Okay? If it's, I don't always do a video, but I save some of the better questions for videos. Okay? So today's question comes from someone who says, Hey, um, I have a question about a new research site that I'm hoping to start up. Uh, in 2013, I was hired by a PI to start a new research site. After starting with one study, the business had grown to 25 active studies and employs four coordinators. Very good. That's about six studies per coordinator, which is right on full capacity. Sounds like you're maxed out on capacity. Uh, I decided to leave at the end of last year to start my own clinic. I left on good terms, and the PI has been very supportive. My initial plan was to find doctors to partner with and use their office space. But this is proving harder than I thought, because it is, okay? Uh, and we'll get into that. Everyone I have spoken face-to-face -face has been positive, but is either unwilling to let me in their office, or wants to hire me as a study coordinator, not as a partner. My question is, do I persevere with this approach? It has only been three months, but I'm starting to feel discouraged. Uh, should I rent my own office and hire a PI on salary? I have three suitable doctors that have expressed interest in employment but none have their own patients. The second approach, meaning opening your own clinic, is a lot more costly um, and more risky as I was counting on a PA with existing practice to refer patients. So yes, okay, continue persevering. Uh, three months is not enough time. I don't know how many PIs you've uh, interacted with, but you need to really be meeting with one a day if you don't have one. Um, preferably two a day if possible and your your goal is to weed out all the bad ones all the ones who want to hire you instead try to negotiate with them if obviously I'm assuming you did and they're still unwilling to partner with you that's fine um, sometimes partnership when it comes to something brand new like opening a research clinic for a doctor may seem a bit overwhelming but they might let you use a portion of their office space where you pay rent and then you pay them, you can pay them a percentage of the studies that they're PI on and that the patients that they enroll, you can use their existing infrastructure and their database um, not only to recruit patients but their existing infrastructure as far as medical staff, office equipment, uh, medical malpractice, premise liability, all that good stuff. Uh, you can use their existing infrastructure in order to build your research clinic. So, Maybe you're approaching it the wrong way. Maybe you're giving them too much to think about right away as far as partnering with them. So why don't you approach them with, hey, allow me into your office. I will pay a portion of your rent if there's enough space. And by the way, you need about 1,600 square feet of office space dedicated just to clinical research. All right. So there's usually not enough spaces in these busy private practices or medical offices to accommodate research, which is why many times research site owners open up their own clinics and have the PIs come to them. That's another option. Uh, if you open up your own research site, meaning rent your own office space, uh, try to find one of the PIs who's willing and agreeable to work with you, but maybe just doesn't have enough space in his own private practice. Um, but maybe he's willing to come to your clinic a couple days a week for just a couple hours each day to handle all the PI responsibilities and duties and have enough oversight, you know the drill, for you to do clinical research. So there's always different ways and angles to negotiate, and it really boils down to who you're negotiating with. You have to really understand what they want, and then try to reverse engineer that into you guys 
doing studies together. And um, you can always do this with more than one person. Okay, you can always set up multiple LLCs or multiple partnerships with different doctors at different offices and have multiple streams of income. In fact, this is what I've done. Um, this is how I started in California, and now we're doing it nationwide. So maybe you're going about it slightly the wrong way. Maybe you're giving them a little too much to think about and too many reasons for them to be hesitant to do this. Um, maybe don't maybe don't approach them with the partnership right away because partnerships are just like marriages and um, you need to at least start dating a little bit before you get into something like that. Uh, so by dating I mean you using their their private practice if there's enough space, you bringing the studies, you teaching them the process of doing research, they enroll the subjects, they have the oversight, you guys share the medical staff, you accomplish the uh, regulatory tasks, you negotiate the budget, you, you complete the source documents, all that stuff that, that, that goes under the category operations, clinical operations, is what you'll be doing. Um, this is the dating process, okay, and this whole time that you're doing this, this whole period that you're dating, you can be paying them a percentage of the gross revenues that you're getting from the studies that they're a principal investigator on, right? I would start with 10%, you can go down to 8 you can negotiate up to as much as 20. A lot of that depends on how much rent you're paying. Are you paying any rent at all in their practice? Are you setting up your own office where you're going to have to pay the entire rent? What is their availability? So reverse engineer, start with what they want and reverse engineer your way back up. You should really be meeting with one interested physician per day. And you should probably come up with like one, at least one potential partner or principal investigator a week that you can that you have a realistic chance of setting up a, a successful research clinic with okay so hopefully this question helps Dan from the clinical trials guru.com and keep watching all right Dan from the clinical trials guru.com take care